Evangelist George. Amen. Welcome to the Truth to Freedom Studio. Amen, amen. I'm actually honored to be here with Pastor Diaz. Amen. It's actually a privilege that the Lord has taken up. Hallelujah. Now it has been a long time coming and I've been looking forward, very much looking forward to have you in the studio. And, uh, you know, God's time is the best time. Exactly, exactly. But um, I know you as Evangelist George. I know you as um, a servant of the Lord. Amen. But um, the purpose of inviting you to the studio is really to introduce you to the people. Amen. Because you know what I stand for. Yes, I often exactly. die, expose, correct, rebuke, false teachers. Exactly. But oftentimes the questions asked by the people are that, well, you so focus on false teachers. Amen. So who are the real ones exactly. in this Amen. case? So um, time yes. to time again, when I bring a guest in studio, that's my way of saying, well, they are real ones out there. Exactly. And you will get to be introduced to them in due time. I know that these um, specific uh, pages of mine on social media, they are growing. More people are starting to follow. More people are starting to see the work that we are doing in the faith. Hallelujah. But um, obviously the focus is to clean up the falsehood, to expose it, and then preach the truth for that matter. But Hallelujah. also at the same time, what I have done is that I have not really introduced true ministers of the gospel Hallelujah. to the people yet. So whenever we are having a podcast like this, it's an opportunity for people to get to meet a few of the ministers that I consider to, to be Hallelujah. true ministers for that matter. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to yes, go yes. through uh, a few questions okay. that will get you introduced to the people. Mm -hmm. to the public, to the faith as a whole. I know you are known already. I'm not saying <laughs> <laughs> you are not known. Yeah, but yeah. Um, there are people out there. There's a whole world out there that is so focused on social media. Mm -hmm. What we want is to introduce them to ministers that are out there that are really preaching the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is why we're going to begin with our first question. Amen. And this is who is evangelist George Petter to those that don't know. Uh, evangelist George Peter is actually a simple guy that grew up in the town of Okahanja. I was born and raised in Okahanja. Mm. And actually I was raised by a single parent because my father passed away while I was 12 years old and I was raised by a single parent. Yeah. And her name is Francisca Peter. Mm. So I'm actually from Okahanja. My background and everything is actually from Okahanja. Hometown. Yes, hometown. That's, that's my hometown. That's so, where I was So born. what you're saying right now is that if there's any Anybody from Okahanja watching this podcast right now, they will be able to say, I know that man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> A lot of people know me. Hallelujah. That. And yes, yes, exactly. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Uh, second question. What kind of person was evangelist George Peter before becoming a child of God? Amen. And evangelist George Peter was actually a man that was caught up in his own mess. Mm. A man that was in alcohol addictions and drug yeah. addictions. I was actually pleasing my own flesh, living according to my fleshly desires, mm. uh, fornicating from left to right. I was into alcohol. I was into drugs and all those type of things that, that was pleasing to my flesh. And by that way, I was actually enslaved by Satan in my own flesh. And I was caught up in my own mess mm. before I came to God, before God has located me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, the next question is, well, how did it all begin? When did you realize that, okay, at this point, I think I am losing it. I think I'm living a messed up life and I need a change in my life. What really triggered you to surrender your life to the Lord? How it all began is when I lost my job at the mine. Yeah. When I lost my job at the mine, everything, my whole life came to a standstill. Mm -hmm. Nothing worked for me. I was caught up in my own mess. Everything just stopped completely. And the people that I really trusted, the people that I depended on, they all distanced Distance themselves. themselves. All the friends that I have, they distanced themselves. My family, they distanced themselves. Yeah. And even the, the ladies that I was dating, everyone, they just distanced themselves. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, I went into a depression and as I went into this depression mm. I went into alcohol abuse 
Wow. I, I started to, to drink so much. I went into drug addictions mm. and I went into fornication from left to right because my soul was seeking for something. Yeah. I was seeking for peace. Running I was seeking for, for love. I was yeah. looking for, for rest and so on. Mm. And the more I would go into this alcohol, the more I would go into this drug, the mm. more I would go into this depression. Yeah. And there was a certain time I usually called my mom and I would complain that yeah. uh, you guys are no longer looking after me you guys don't care about me there's no one that has to assist me mm -hmm. because as a man you you need certain things yeah and by that time the lord had to make sure that he had to cut off every supply yeah everything was cut off the people that i depended on they all distanced themselves and yeah. i was all alone and the only person that i would call during that time was my mom i would call her i would cry through the phone i would complain mm -hmm. that they don't love me that they don't care about me and so on yeah and there were words that my mom could say that she would say that no it is only god that can really give you the rest it's only wow. god that can really help you no one will be able to help you as you can see i'm already old enough how will i be able to help, to help you, you, yeah. you have to tend to god you have to give your life to god and so on my mom was the one actually that blended the seed yeah. in me and from there i have decided let me try this god yeah let me try this jesus that my mom is talking, talking about. about she was actually the one that introduced me to god because every time when i complained she would point point to jesus. to jesus she yeah. would say he's the only one that will help you and so on and in this time i was desperate yeah. i was in need and whenever she said that it would even make me more angry more because angry, i yeah. needed help i did not need jesus yeah. and so on. Yeah. but i did not know this all was the works of god because yeah. he wanted me alone yeah. he wanted my attention on him because my attention was to focus on my family to focus on my brothers my sisters oh, and yeah. all those people yeah. so the lord wanted to get hold of my mind he wanted my yeah, attention exactly. and twice in my life i have tried committing suicide because of this depression wow. and so on. twice in my life i tried to commit suicide my family knows and those close Indeed. friends of mine they also know yeah so i almost ended my life because sure. of those things because mm -hmm. it was a torment that i went through. yes yeah every day of imagine. my life was a torment i can just imagine now imagine that these people these many young people out there right now that are going through precisely what you went through. And right now they are seeking for help as well in the same manner from people because this is just how we are structured as people. This is yes. just how we are made by God. We are made in such a way, or the system itself has mm -hmm. raised up in such a way that we depend on people. We yes. depend on friends, family, mm -hmm. uh, former employees, and mm -hmm. so on, in order mm -hmm. to survive. <laughs> but now it, it turns out that you reach to a point where these people, once you have fallen down, they withdraw themselves. Completely. They now look at you there and they no laugh one. behind your back. They are like this Malala Bay who <laughs> wants to be there for them. <laughs> for those that don't know that only speak English, Malala Bay, I believe, is mm. a slang for street kid. Mm. I don't know whether this is um, a, 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 a Shiwambo slang or African slang, but anyway, it just means street kid. Mm. That's really how people view you once you have no finances or income any longer. Now, just like you, I believe that there are many young people out there that are looking to people to help them. But now in your case, when you were looking to people to help you, your mom kept pointing you to somebody else. Not oh, your brothers, not your no, sister, no. not your former uh, employees, no one but Jesus. Jesus. And you were thinking this is irritating. Irritating. I was getting <laughs> angry because I needed help. <laughs> and you are pointing me to somebody who's invincible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's yeah. somebody out there right now mm. as well who's going through what you went through mm. and somebody is trying to point them to Jesus. Mm. And they are just thinking, you know, this is hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that this Jesus can help mm. me. I need immediate yes. attention. You yes. know, I'm a patient that needs immediate attention. Mm. But yet they don't realize that Jesus is truly the only way out. Amen. The ultimate solution to every problem. But I think I cut you short there. Mm. You said your mom did not bring you to the faith, but yet she planted the seed. Yes, exactly. My mom was the one that planted the seed. Yeah. Of, 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 of. Yeah, she, uh, pulling you to Christ or pointing you to Christ for that. Yeah, life. she planted the seed of, yeah. of, of 
the only person that can help me is Jesus. Is Jesus, yeah. And this, 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 this thing, whenever I would call her, mm. every time she would point me to Jesus. Same answer every and time. Same answer every time. And there was a time that I seated alone yeah. at home in Okahanja. And as I was sitting alone, I could hear the only voices that I could hear was my mom's voice. Wow. Telling me, Jesus is the only one that can give you peace. Wow. He can, he's the only one that can help you and so on. Mm. Every time, whenever I was drunk, yeah. I could still hear the voice that he's the only one that can that help can you. Help he's the only you, one yeah. that can save you. So my mom was the one that planted the seed. Yeah. But okay, she was but not when, the one. When did you decide that? Today is the day. Today I'm going to obey these instructions that my mom or this Jesus that my mom keeps pointing me to. I want to give him a try. When did that come to me? Okay. Uh, when it comes to those type of things, there is a, every town has its own atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Precisely. And I believe that God was working through my in-law because yeah. uh, apart from all those things, I received a phone call from my in-law. Okay. So by that time, he was living in Swagopmon. Yeah. So he called me and he said, no, I see that you are struggling there. Why don't you come to Swagopmon and maybe you can seek for employment here. You can seek for a job and from there you can mm -hmm. fix your life and so on. Yeah. But so little... Did I know that I did not came here to seek for employment, to seek for work? I came here mm. to receive Jesus, to encounter Jesus, to meet him and to Hallelujah. give over my life to God. And I came to Sabbath Moon and from there I was invited to a certain church. To a church service, yeah. Yes, and as I was invited to this church, everything just came into as puzzles. Wow. Because I heard the preaching and so on about about God, how he can transform your life, how he can change and so on. Yeah. So I have decided I have nothing to lose. Yeah. I lose my job, my friends, everything. I lose every oh, yeah. person has distanced yes. himself, exactly. themselves yeah. and I'm all alone. Mm. So let me give my attention to yeah. this person that the people are talking about, that my mom is talking about. Let me try this Jesus yeah. to see really if this Jesus that, that my mom is talking about will really give yeah. me peace, will really Surreal. help me in this regard and so on. Yes. That's when I decided to surrender my life, life to, to the Lord. To the yeah. Lord. That's Hallelujah. how we located Hallelujah. Okay, so the first part is finished. Amen. There was this man called George. Simple George. Yes. And Simple George was going through all of these difficult things. Amen. And the mother of George kept pointing him to somebody that could help him. And Amen. he eventually decided to adhere to the instructions. He decided mm -hmm. to surrender his life to the Lord. But little did he know. Mm. that the Lord did not even begin yet. That was just uh, step one. Yes, it was just like the Lord <laughs> was trying to get my attention yes. so that I can give him fully my attention Yeah. so that my focus could not be like my mom will help me, who yeah. will help me, who won't help me. He mm. wanted me to completely depend on him alone Hallelujah. and nobody else. Yeah. Because when there is still someone that you will depend on, you will still fall back to that yes. person. Uh, so true. in my case, there was no one that I can depend on, mm. that I can fall back to, but and to go. Alone. Your whole faith has, has had to be placed on this on Jesus. I had to Lord. put all my eggs in one bucket. Hallelujah. And that bucket is Jesus. That's what it is when we give our lives to God, when we give our lives to Jesus. It's really placing all our eggs in one basket, not different baskets and so on. Hallelujah. So um, now, simple George, it just so happened that he was called, and he yes. was called as an evangelist of mm -hmm. God, an evangelist of Christ. Hallelujah. When did you realize your calling? When when did you realize that you were called as an evangelist and somehow you needed to step out of your comfort zone and begin going out there to preach the gospel? When did this come to be? Hallelujah. It was four years back since I gave my life to God. It okay. was four years back yeah. because uh, the teachings... Mm. The preachings and all those things, it really make an impact in my life. Because Within the church that you yeah, were attending back the, the then. The former church that I was attending to, yeah. the preaching, the teachings, it really make an impact in my life. Oh, yeah. I, I saw that the Lord was busy with my inner man. Hallelujah. He was busy retraining me because mm. I was used to the worldly lifestyle. I was used to living life according to my own flesh yes. and desires. Yes. But as I hear the word of God being preached, yeah. I, I learned that I had to depend on the instructions of the Holy on Spirit. God I had to depend on the word of God and I have to live my life according to His will and not according to my will. Yeah. So during those four years, the Lord was making an impact. I was being built. The Lord was 
was transforming me, my inner man, he was busy transforming my mind, mm. the way I see things, the way I do things, the way I hear, everything yeah. completely was changed and so on. So it all break loose when uh, the whole world was locked down because hit of COVID-19. COVID-19, yeah. yeah. When COVID-19 hit around the whole world, there was a lockdown yeah. that went Yes. So the whole churches around the world was closed for a certain time. Yeah. And when this lockdown happened, there was no church. All of us were just at home and so on. Exactly. And while we were at home, I received a dream. Mm. And in this dream, I saw myself standing in the streets and preaching to the people. Okay. Gathering the people for the second coming. As I was preaching, I was preaching about the second coming, warning people that he's coming back, telling yeah. people that there is a day that the Lord has chosen that he will come back to gather his people to take his people back home. Yeah. And when I received that dream, when I wake up, I was strongly convicted that now is the time, now is the opportunity to go out into to the streets out, yeah. and preach the gospel. Mm. Go out into the streets and preach the gospel. The yeah. churches that we all were going to, they are locked down, it is closed. So yeah. that was an opportunity that I had to go out into the street and preach the, preach the gospel. And since that day when I wake up, that burden was too heavy on me. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize that no, this, this is actually showing me that I'm actually called as an evangelist. Because there was a certain burden that the Lord has placed on me. Yeah. I could I could not I could not live a normal life. It was like I had to go out yeah. and preach the gospel. Yeah. Because that is now the opportunity for the gospel to be preached and so on. Yeah. And since then I started to go out into the streets to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I can relate to that due to the fact that I do remember at times, uh, I think a, a year or two years ago, when we're living very close to each other, we're practically neighbors. That uh, I can recall that whenever your equipment was not functioning well, there were some technical issues and so on, you would get sick when you did not go out there to minister. And that was, you know, something that I never seen before in my life. Yeah. That, that was, you know, <laughs> a new experience <laughs> to me. And uh, it gets me... To confirm what you are saying, I can confirm that that is true. There is definitely a heavy burden placed upon you. Yes. I believe that there is a heavy burden placed upon all of us as children of God, but some are sensitive to the Spirit. Yes. They can feel it, they can hear, and they know that this is God right now placing this thing upon me, and I need to step out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. but many others cannot see it. Yes. Because we are really called, the instructions still remain, go here, out there and make disciples of all nations. Go and preach Christ out there. But then you find some who would rather be comfortable in this gift that they've been given, whether it's to prophesy, whether it's to heal the sick, whether it's to do whatever you know they've been given to do, that they forget the preaching of the word, the most important thing that they are supposed to do. Now, just to add on that, yeah, you see... When I started off with the evangelism ministry, mm -hmm. there would be nights that I could not sleep. I okay. was restless. Yeah. That burden would, would make me not to sleep or to eat food properly. Mm -hmm. Because that burden, only if I go out and do an evangelism, then yeah. I would have a normal life. I can then I will, I will feel I will feel joyful. I will feel a certain peace in my heart. But if I don't do evangelism, yeah. I don't sleep. Because I cannot stay for two months or three months without doing evangelism, yeah. without doing an outreach, without going out into the streets wherever to preach the gospel. Wow. It's, it's a burden that has been laid upon me and I have decided to take that and put it into goals. Wow. And there was four years that the Lord was giving me as, as, as training. Preparation. The Lord was preparing me. He was training me into yeah. this evangelism. Yeah. So as I was preaching, ministering, going to town to town, that was just training. Yeah. And last year, 2023, mm. it ended. And from this year on, the Lord is now busy with something big and greater. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. At least you know the mission at hand. Amen. You are not lost like Amen. many that are out there that are just running without knowing uh, what the mission is and so on. Uh, but it's very important, actually. There's something that you mentioned there. There's something that you mentioned that is very important, that you actually were out there being prepared. 
yes. being trained. Now you realize that today I need to talk about this. It's very important because what we are talking about is related to that. You realize yes. that today many young ministers are being ordained left to right. Yes. And yet there is no confirmation from the Lord that they were really called for the position that they are being ordained for. And from the moment that they get to be ordained, you know that churches are ordaining ministers simply because they are screaming in church. They yeah, stand yeah. up, they are participating in tithing, they are mm-hmm. preaching loud. You know how they try to mm-hmm. impress yes, you know, exactly. the overseers in yes, order yes. for them to be ordained. And then yes. because the minister, the overseer of mm-hmm. the church is desperate mm-hmm. to have these people to stay in their church. He doesn't want them to leave because they are big contributors of tithe mm-hmm. and they are always there when they are needed. They just ordain them after a year or after six months. And then what happens is that the devil places the spirit of pride upon their shoulder and eventually they clash with the overseer and they leave the church. But yet you say that it took you four years and you knew that the Lord wanted you to wait four years years, of preparation before Mm -hmm. you embark on to whatever journey actually you know set you up Mm -hmm. to go on. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is really amazing. We, we, we have very few ministers that know what they are called for and the process mm-hmm. and the duration that it should take exactly. to get where they need to be and so on. So this is really amazing. I hope that all the ministers that are watching these young ministers, they can be able to really learn something from this. Be patient. Yes. The Lord told the disciples that the promise will come upon you. The promise will come to you, but you need to wait in Jerusalem Hallelujah. for 40 days. Yes. After 40 days, you will receive power. Mm. But today, I don't know whether they are hearing <laughs> from the Lord. Too quick to uh, they, are, they are too quick to get uh, to the part where mm. they are the, 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 the main character of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a five minutes break. Let's take a two minutes break. Amen. And if you are actually a follower of this podcast right now, all we want you to do is just to press that like button. Amen. To follow um, my page as well as to share the video with friends and family. And they will be blessed as much as you are being blessed as well.